for Texas while North Carolina handled Tennessee in the semifinals. Aloha everyone, Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. A couple of injuries could be key in this game, more about that in a moment. But Jay, when we talk about Iowa, a very tough task in this tournament. North Carolina will be the third straight ranked team they've played here and the Hawkeyes have looked good. No question that Iowa has had the toughest road to this final in the Maui Invitational and Steve Alford has got some outstanding guards. Pierre Pierce and Jeff Horner. Pierce with the injured ankle is going to have to gut it out. They're going to have to protect the ball and Horner, 27 against Texas, averages 18 points a game. He reminds me a lot of Mark Price. I'll just say one word. McCants. Rashawn McCants is playing great basketball. I think he's settled in. He's comfortable. He feels good about his team. I think Roy feels good about him. He can play any place on the floor, Jay. Fill it deep. Middle game. Post up. Attitude. Excellent. Could have a great year. And it's so important for him and them if that's the case. We mentioned injury concerns. We knew about Pierre Pierce's ankle from last night. More about that in a second. But North Carolina has an injury concern. Raymond Felton, about six and a half minutes into the game last night against Tennessee, crashed to the floor after being fouled by C.J. Watson. We thought it might just be a funny bone issue with that left arm, but it turns out to be a sprained wrist. It hurt him enough that he went for x-rays last night. They were negative, but his left wrist will be heavily taped. And Pierre Pierce, the leading scorer for Iowa last year on the last play of the game yesterday in their win against Texas, twisted his ankle, had to be helped off the court. Not putting any weight on the left ankle as he left. There he is in the bottom of your picture as he collided with the Texas Longhorn. But he said he felt well during the day. He was out here for the warm-up and looked pretty good running around. And the Iowa coaches we talked to a few minutes ago said, He's going to be just fine. And that's important for Iowa against the North Carolina team that has averaged 90 points per game in their two wins here. They have Felton with Jackie Manuel, Rashad McCants, Jawad Williams, and Sean May. And for the Hawkeyes of Iowa, Adam Holuska with Jeff Horner and Pierre Pierce, Greg Bruner, and Eric Hansen, the shot blocking center in the front court. There's Felton with the left wrist heavily taped. North Carolina in white. Bob Donato, the lead official, throws the ball in the air, working with Tony Green and Vern Harris. Hanson will jump against Williams. And the championship game is underway. It's controlled. The tip by Iowa. And Sean and Jerry, the heels go. Important to handle the pressure for Iowa. They're going to see some traps, and they've also got a rebound. North Carolina even on the glass with their opponents on the season. Bruner. Rebound by May, the leader in rebounding in the ACC last year at 9.8 per game. He had 13 in their win yesterday. Felt the handle the ball pretty well with his left hand, his offhand. McCann for three. Ooh, one word. Unguardable. Aluska guarding McCants, he can't handle it. Aluska misses a three, Felton up for the rebound. McCants at 27 in the win yesterday against Tennessee. And Hanson, another block shot. He's swatted nine away in the first two games of this tournament. I think the big area of concern is Jay Luther was turnovers, but also reversing the basketball. You've got to get it side to side and get good shots if you happen to be Iowa. But once again, Hanson, the long arm of the law. Jackie Manuel, and now Felton. Pretty strong. May had trouble catching the pass. Felton for three. Well, so much for the wrist being a problem so far. <laughs> he only needs one hand. Uh, also, the choreographer run the offense. Pretty kiss by the big fella. Eric Hansen, the junior from Bedford, Texas. Iowa needs to be careful here early. North Carolina has jumped off to a great start in both games here. They led BYU 25 to 3 on the first day. And yesterday they shot 65.4 percent of the first half while scoring 51 points against Tennessee. May fouled by Hanson. Sean, that was so pretty. The spin out, the quickness of May. Hanson a little tardy, trails him into the lane. Raymond Felton not known as a great shooter, but after the 
sure-handed Sean May bobbled the ball. He relocated to Felton, who was ready to shoot. Yeah, that, that was going through my mind. That, that's a first. He handles everything cleanly, but everybody takes it. If you take your eye off it, you're going to fumble it. You know, it's like a guy fumbling a punt and then running it all the way back. Yeah, the, I think he almost surprised the defense by not catching it straight up. He didn't lose it, though, right? When McCants saw that Adam Haluska was guarding him, his eyes lit up. He knows that Haluska cannot guard him. He is a tough guy to match up on. McCants. In a route, he has got Pierce. Oh, another good denial here by Manuel. And then Haluska couldn't get through the trap. McCants foul, count it. Pierre Pierce fouled him in a chance for three for Rashad McCants. And the reaction defensively may not have been the typical Pierre Pierce, but how about the trap on the sideline, Jay? You've seen enough of it. McCants leaking out, and Pierce maybe not able to catch up with that ankle, but we are looking at a player of the year candidate in Rashad McCants. You know, during warm-ups, there was an air, a regal air about him. I don't know if you noticed, a business air. And I think that's so important to him to, not that he wouldn't take his job seriously, but enjoy what he's doing out there. Brunner. Pierce for three. Well, if wrists and ankles are hurting right now, give everybody a bad wrist or a sore ankle. Oh, they have a heck of a doctor. Or Roll Roberts is in the house. McCants working on Pierce now. Jawad Williams, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio. Manual, a tough shot, never got up to the rim. Here's Horner, the kick ahead to Pierce. Mike Henderson on the floor for Iowa. He was waiting for that skip pass for a long time. And they get right up on Horner. Such a terrific deep shooter. Pierce for three more. Closeouts are going to be very important the way Iowa is shooting the ball. I think the officials want to check to see if there's blood on Jawad Williams. Look at the range here, the ability to drag the defense that far. Lost the contact lens. And you really need good legs to make a jump shot. You're right. You can't be in pain, and obviously Pierce able to react. Maybe the foot speed's not what he would like. Well, Horner and Pierce have combined for 16 of the 18 three-point shots that Iowa's hit on the year. Williams appeared to find the contact lens that popped out on the floor. He has gone out of the game. And Marvin Williams, a talented freshman from Bremerton, Washington, number 24, has come in for North Carolina. Six straight points by Iowa. A run ended on the jump hook by Sean May, the junior from Bloomington, Indiana. Such a tough shot. Hanson right there. He does not want to have early fouls. Bruner head down, charging down the lane. McCants got a piece of it, and then Bruner had it out of bounds. Maybe should have kicked it first. Well, he just put his head down. He made up his mind what he was going to do and couldn't get himself out of the move. Steve Alford, he is the only team in this tournament now that has not suffered at least one loss this season. He's 3-0. and The victory over Western Illinois before they left to come out here. And the wins against two ranked opponents against Louisville, a five-point win, and Texas, a two-point win. They trailed at the half in both games. Hits and another block shot. You have to be more imaginative. He just beat him a nice run by the big guy. How about that? Back to back. The block, the sprint out. We are seeing a force emerging in the Big Ten in Eric Hansen. Came to Iowa very raw, and he is blossoming very quickly. Foul called a little nudge by Bruner, who's disgusted with the call. You've got to come with something different against a guy that blocks shots. He, right hand, beautiful. And how about the run here, Jake? Running the floor, nobody picks him up. May trying to stop the ball. He's got to get back and protect the paint. They don't need him stopping the ball. They need a guard to do it. Well, somebody else should have played Hanson for him, even though he made the mistake. That's good team defense. Underneath, Felton went to the left hand. That is wrapped and missed the layup. An action-packed first four minutes. No sign of fatigue playing for the third time in three days for these teams. And that's the second foul on Bruner as he hit Marvin Williams. That's the danger of playing behind. 
And as you note frequently, no ball pressure, easy entry. North Carolina leads by one at our first timeout. Get Approximately 2.2 million visitors a year come to the beautiful island of Maui. Most people seem quite content. The fans inside the building content with an action-packed start to this EA Sports Maui Invitational Championship game. Ray Felton and the Tar Heels lead by one, and Marvin Williams is at the free throw line. So we were talking during the commercial about how easy Carolina does score, Jay, as you noted. It puts pressure. I think you've got to make Carolina play a little longer defense. I'm not saying you should take the quick hitter when it's there. Make them work a little bit. Well, the longer you make North Carolina defend, the more likely their defense is to break down. That's true of any team. Greg Bruner on the bench with two fouls now for Iowa. And pick it up there. And you see how late Thomas was on the post in the middle? Well, McCants bailed him out. If he hadn't a reach, they probably would have gotten a turnover there, but a great trap as the ball came across half court, and Horner just picked his dribble up. That is the cardinal sin. You can't pick up your dribble just across half court. The first time they do it, though, it's sort of alarming. I think that's the impact it has. And he's looking to do it again. That freedom. Pierce with McCants on him. Porter. The runner is short. Hanson crashing the boards but couldn't get there for Iowa. Manuel nearly traveled as he lost his balance before getting it off to Felton. Felton, Manuel, McCants, Marvin Williams, and Jawad Williams. And that's Marvin Williams. Count the basket and a chance for three. I think I'd even just let that one go. Score the goal, go the other way. But that was too easy. The back screen, Jay. Great screen by McCants. But some communication. Well, you got to bump that cutter right there. They, it was a little bit of a bump, but Pierce didn't let Hanson get through. That's just a little on big screen. Awfully difficult to, to uh, defend. I think even if you just switch, it gives you, buys you time. I'm not saying it's the ideal number relationship. Five quick points off the bench for Marvin Williams. He had seven against Tennessee. Eight in their route of BYU. A takeaway by Manuel. He took it away from Henderson. Fell underneath. Jawan Williams couldn't catch it. And now numbers for Iowa. Got Horner. Henderson will shoot a pair. See, that's the thing about playing together. If you've got a guy like Horner and he's free, it almost dictates he gets the ball. Bounce to the ball, keep your head up. He's got that spot up three jumper at the top. Fortunate to get to the free throw line. But doesn't it seem like Iowa is going almost uncomfortably fast for them? I think it's primarily because of the terrific defense we've seen from North Carolina. They are speeding the pace of this game, and as a result, the Hawkeyes are missing openings. They rip you up and make you rely on individual ability. Colin Feld was his first. Sean May returns for North Carolina. Henderson made the first free throw. It's the first free throw attempted by the Hawkeyes in the game. Played only the first semester last year. Had academic issues that held him out in the second semester. Henderson's a sophomore. And his miss rebounded by Doug Thomas. Use the shot clock a little. Make them dig down. Hanson very confident, but long with the jumper. And Melvin Scott recently into the game. Got it to Felton. In five seconds they shot, Sean. McCants. That's a two, and that's almost impossible to defend. Soft as well. I mean, that tough rims, we noted. Wow. Locked out of bounds by McCants. He is upset. Now, Pierce didn't make both threes on him, but he's going to lock him up. Rashad McCants looked like he kind of taunted Pierce when he went down. And well, he didn't well, help him up either. He just kind Roy of glared Williams. at him and then turned and walked away. Roy Williams was upset. He took McCants out right away. So that's the area I think he's looking for growth and maturation. And that's all he needs. And now his play resumes. Roy is talking, as you can see in the background, to McCants about just that. That is not the Carolina way. And... Rashad is tired of being analyzed and having people evaluate his every move and facial expression, but when he does things like that, it leads to continuing analysis. Well, plus he's a compelling figure. He's a star. 
and he has done and said some things that have gained attention. But he is a compelling figure, and that's the responsibility that goes along with it. It may not be fair, but that's the way it is. And he also sees stars doing it on another level on occasion, and that's not a good example. Hansen got raked across the arm. Leave Noel there. It is on David Noel. Roy Williams won a Maui Invitational with Kansas in 1996. North Carolina has been in the finals now all four times they've made the trip to Maui. They won it once in 1999 with Joseph Forte, the MVP for Coach Bill Guthridge. Iowa couldn't get it in. So they use a timeout with 13.54 left. There is Bill Guthridge. Speaking of Bill, he's been in his share of hellball situations. One of the classiest guys you'll ever meet, Bill Guthridge. Amen to that. And here we can see the block on Pierre Pierce by McCants. Pierce goes up, McCants right there, blocking with his right hand. See how he sort of looks down at him and taunts him a little bit? Well, Roy Williams jumped all over that situation, immediately got David Noel in for McCants, and I think handled it very delicately on the sidelines, addressed it, but didn't make too big a deal out of it. You know what's great for McCants? It happened right there where Roy could see it and maybe hear it and address it correctly. And he will be in shortly. I think you're right. You don't want to be admonished or embarrassed and Roy with a lot of style in that situation. Well, it wasn't malicious. It was just one of those things. And, and that happens sometimes in competition. But as you say, it happens too much. Mm -hmm. Guys on higher levels do it. And it's become an acceptable way of dealing with things. And I don't agree with it. Wow. That's acceptable too. Huh? Knock it down. The trade by Horner. Bomb from downtown for Horner, the senior, excuse me, junior for Mason City, Iowa. Fell the near ball, it wound up in the lap of May. And Noel there to clean up his miss. David Noel, a junior. Pierce looking for the quick counter, and he was fouled. Well, they've had a few lapses in transition defense, Carolina. And look at the distance here. That's too much space for that guy. You want him to beat you with the dribble. The foot speed of the defenders of Carolina is more than adequate to cope with that. You give him that much time and that much space, that's a 25-foot layup for Jeff Horner. But without Greg Bruner in there, Iowa is having some problems on the backboard. Boy, Pierce shoots the free throws very quickly, doesn't he? It's almost as if he's starting his motion as the officials are giving him the ball. Couple dribbles this time. I yeah, I guess so. It. The first one was up before he even had it in his hand. He missed both. And here come the heels, leading by six. Nearly seven minutes in. Melvin Scott way off. That's not his shot. He was dribbling. He's a standstill jump shooter. 140 career threes for Melvin Scott. He made three in their win last night against Tennessee. Flex Scott. Here steps back from Noel. Rebound Felton. Whoa. Scott way short with it. May had it blocked out of bounds. Iowa just has to slow the offense down. Yeah, Pierre Pierce needs to calm down. I agree. Quick I agree. Jacks like that against a talented team. High octane. Pull the plug a little bit. And a team that has had, frankly, some questions about their defense in the past. Why not make them guard? three or four different passes. See Pierce trying to stretch that left ankle that he injured last night. He also tweaked an ankle, the same one in their opening win back in Iowa City against Western Illinois. So Rod Williams returns. A little zone there, they like to lob out of that. May. Woo. How about that? That's a little spice of variety in the arsenal. A little kiss by the big fella. John May, his dad, Scott, the National Player of the Year at Indiana in 76 on their undefeated national title team. Felton showing absolutely no ill effects from that sore wrist, rifled one through the hands of Jawad Williams. Maybe just a little too much heat on the pass. A little bounce pass might have been better. Get the vision, softness in it. McCants back in. He's returned with Marvin Williams. It's Felton Manuel, May, Marvin Williams, and McCants for North Carolina. Enjoying its largest lead. 
Alex Thompson has come in, the freshman number five for Iowa. Corner trip by Felton. Well, he reminds you of Alford a little bit in the pump fake, uh, which Indiana did so well under Bobby Knight. So many people at clinics have learned that. Get the guy airborne, put it on the deck. Five o'clock in the evening here in Maui. And the Maui Championship game is underway. The EA Sports Maui Invitational. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. North Carolina and Iowa meeting for just the third time. Iowa won the previous two meetings in back-to-back -back years, 89 and 90. Sean, they're having major problems inbounding the ball. They're not cutting, not screening well. North Carolina switching a lot of these screens. Haluska got it in deep to Horner. Haluska has it back. He's been anxious throughout this tournament. And then a foul on the rebounding action. Good hustle by Alec Thompson trying to cover the glass. And the fouls on Jackie Manuel, his first. They're over the limit. In camp here in 2004, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Sean, I understand that the media was questioning Rashad McCann's commitment to defense in that video game. <laughs> Well, the guy who played a little defense, Ryan Mobleson, who's with EA Sports, works with a real pro on weekends, Brent Musburger. Very happy with the tournament, and particularly in your attitude this week. Well, thank you very much. It's been a joy to be here. The EA Sports people certainly treat us wonderfully, better than we deserve. Marvin Williams rebounded the miss by Alex Thompson. That was the front end of a one-and-one. For the zone look here, you think McCants could have been in trouble in the video game with Roy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, McCants, it, there, been, there was an article in Sports Illustrated recently. You know, he questions why people view him in the way they do. But if he's wondering what happened here tonight is a little bit, I think, of an example of why. But I, I think it's hard for young people. I'm not standing. I don't think it was right what he did. They see so many people of a high echelon. They think that's cool to do or proper to do. And I think what Roy's trying to do, and that's what's great about college. You get rid of a lot of that excess. Yeah, and what happened over in front of the Carolina bench was not a big deal. But no. uh, I applaud Roy Williams for taking care of it right away. And the chance has handled it well. I think he's going to turn out, well, obviously, as a player real good. But I think the whole growth process will be enhanced this year. Corner, a long hit ahead. To Mike Henderson, who pulls up. Doug Thomas, good position for the rebound, and he was fouled by Marvin Williams. I don't know what Henderson was thinking in taking that shot. Thomas bailed him out by getting the offensive rebound, but that was a bad shot, even if it goes in. They don't need a shot clock right now, Iowa. They've got to be patient, get the ball to different spots. And also, you know, Carolina is not searching bodies out and checking out. They're just doing their little area, chasing the ball. They might have been surprised, too. I mean, good Iowa might need a shot clock. Don't shoot it before this time. Steve Alford thinks he might have his best and deepest team of his six years at Iowa, and it certainly looks like that could well be the case with the way the Hawkeyes have played out here. And I think just that Jay mentioned Steve's reasoning in that substitution. Iowa now three for seven from the free throw line. Back within six with 11 minutes to go in the half, and Horner called for smacking manual. That's one of those why out that distance. And a good decision by Steve Alford to go with the zone. McCants on the floor right now, really the only one that can kill you from the perimeter. And it gives them a little bit of a different look and maybe slows this Tar Heel team down a bit. See if they do the back screen lob. Foul on Horner was his first is Quentin Thomas, the freshman from Oakland, California, with his first points of the Maui Invitational. He was scoreless in eight minutes against BYU and in seven minutes against Tennessee. First Carolina player from California since Scott Williams. In the late 80s, May saved it but gave it to Haluska. Blocking the call with a count the basket. Yes. Bob Donato is not signaled yet. Now he says score it. Pretty good play by Haluska. Take it with the authority. Nice strong move here but May with a heck of a play and just can't get it to the right color shirt. A little slide by. He is a strong guy. Well, he's a Husband. great athlete. He won eight individual high school state titles in track and field. Three in the long jump. Twice he won the 100 meters. Twice he won the 200 meters at the state meet in Iowa. And once the 400 meters. As a senior in high school, 
He won four individual events. Was the fourth athlete in the 97-year history of the state meet in Iowa to do that. The 100, 200, 400 long jump, he all won. He's from Carroll, Iowa. Oh, please. Well, that's that duck there. They're addressing, Jay. They want to clean it up. He's invigorated after the nice drive and goal. That was a good post-up. I mean, I understand the rule and don't have a problem with it. I guess technically it's correct, but this is basketball. First foul on Holuska. Thomas underneath to Marvin Williams. Lost it as he tried to make a move to the bucket, and Holeska took it away midway through the half. Iowa on the run. It's Thomas with a nice catch of the long pass from Pierre Pierce. The Hawkeyes back within three. Well, Thomas is quick. Not that quick to get out on the chance. He's unbelievable. I mean, he shoots it with such ease. It is effortless from that distance. The fluidity is incredible. And he has 10 points. Pierce thought if he picked it back up, there would be a double dribble, so... He let it go, and Carlton Reed couldn't rescue Iowa. Five turnovers for the Hawkeyes. How about the range here? You got Thomas Looming, Jay. That's amazing. It's just beautiful. Straight up and down. Pretty release. Quick release. Not a thing wrong with that jump shot. It's like Tiger Woods golf swing. Or Sean's. Thank you. They've often been compared to each other, mine and Tiger's. If that ever gets out that he's... Tiger compared did the to, game compared McCann's stroke to John Swing, he'll never get drafted. Reed took it away from McCants. Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa last year. Freshman is Carlton Reed from Waterloo out of East High School. The hook, that's an offensive foul. Good call. Boy, you can't camouflage it in the low post area, but outside, everybody sees it. A little uncomfortable at distance. The little wrap around. When your arms are 44 inches, it's a lot easier to see. Second foul on Eric Hansen. Bruner's been on the bench since picking up his second. And they're hanging in there with the Tar Heels without Bruner. Noel lost control of the ball, and then Haleska another steal. Four on three, the Iowa break. Good poise. Haleska from very deep. How about that? Everybody settles defensively. Kick it back and convert. Six points for Holesco, who played one year at Iowa State. And then when Larry Eustace left, transferred to Iowa and sat out last year. McCants fouled by Hansen. Well, Caroline does a great job getting inside, but Holesco, who's been quiet during the tournament, a little drive early, maybe woke him up, Jay. He's backing up, but still has the presence to step into that shot. But how about the way that McCants inside was able to elevate and get up and challenge Hanson? Hanson has three fouls now. That is a huge early factor in this game. McCants makes the free throw. And I think, Sean, part of the, the zone was to protect Hanson, but this team is as good as anybody, Carolina, getting the ball inside and making your big guys close them for decisions whether they're good or bad. Two free throws by McCants. The lead five for the University of North Carolina. 12 points for McCants. Led the ACC in scoring last year at 20 a game. Look at this denial. Five second count. There's a timeout. And you're really on an island out there if you're Horner. I know you got to keep the dribble alive, but the timing is pick it up and somebody's got to sprint free. Nobody bailed them out. Denials, denials, denials. Just incredible. Up here, too, Jay, they're going to lead the post people. You're going to have to pull the string and go deep. Well, he had a bunch of inexperienced players trying to get open. They were trying to get open a conventional way instead of just running to the ball. And playing without their two starting inside players now, Bruner and Hanson, both on the bench with foul trouble. North Carolina will try to exploit that. Melvin Scott. He can one bounce, but he got set up, square. It's almost like a catch and shoot. Yeah, with rhythm. Part of the senior class that's had the tumultuous ride in North Carolina, including an 8-20 and 20 record in their freshman season, coaching change in their sophomore season. NCA last year with 19 wins. Horner a miss. 
Out of bounds, last touch by North Carolina. The officials are going to talk about it. They may reverse the call. He was not set on that particular jumper, and that happens against Carolina. They are not going to reverse the call. After conferring, it will remain Iowa basketball after this timeout. We'll return to the A Sports Maui Invitational Championship game right after this. Back on beautiful Maui as the sun sets over Lanai. We're on West Maui for the championship game at the Lahaina Civic Center. Here is the last whistle before the timeout. Roy Williams upset. He thought it was the wrong call, and he was right. It was last touch by Iowa. That wasn't even close, he says have, Roy Williams. He didn't have replay either. Usually when they confer, it gets overturned. But after they conferred, they stuck with the original call. Here, Pierce to play it in. They're still without Hanson and Bruner with foul trouble. Nice play off the inbounds, but poor execution. Thomas couldn't handle the feed from Pierce. Uh, they were really having a problem with the automatic switching on the inbounds. Haluska inside, brushed, and will go to the line. With a double bonus the rest of the half, both ways. Second foul on Rashad McCants. He leads North Carolina with 12. Leads all scorers in the game with 12. And seems to always be that way. He leads in scoring, May in rebounding, Felton in assist. They reached the ACC leader in those categories last season. Doubles in scoring, last 60 of 65 games coming to this tournament, so he can load it up. Eight points now for Haluska out of Carroll High School in Iowa, where his dad, Steve, was his high school principal. And Haluska was a four-year starter on the basketball team, never averaged less than 17 points a year in high school. Jawad Williams rebounded by Pierre Pierce. His third, almost traveled. Haluska for three. He's having by far his best game of the tournament. 11 points for the sophomore. And Marvin Williams was not ready to play. That was a little delayed defensively. Doug Thomas came right over here. Sean, are you out from under the table yet? <laughs> I was getting ready to take the charge. Had excellent position, fortunately. I turned and ran. Jay boxed me out. It's called protecting you. I need all the help I can get. Good effort by Thomas. We're very grateful to him for reversing his course. McCants missed a shorty, but it's tipped in by Marvin Williams. And really, McCants didn't score the goal, but he did everything else. He got all two defenders to him to open up the glass. Seven points for. Marvin Williams, the preseason ACC Rookie of the Year, McDonald's All-American at Bremerton High School in the Seattle area last year when he averaged 29 and 16 rebounds a game. Uh, Felton has really done a wonderful oh, job. Great on, job by Williams. Yeah. Uh, on the ball to Felton. I wonder if he landed on that wrist as he got tripped up from behind by Doug Thomas. He was banging the floor as if to say, boy, that really hurt. Second foul on Doug Thomas. And the 10th on Iowa, so it'll be two shots the rest of the way for North Carolina. He's actually walking it off, I think. And McCants trying to help him. This all started with Felton's great defense on the ball, the step in in the low post, and that does happen occasionally in basketball. He must have got a stinger on that on that wrist. He actually went down first on the right wrist. That hurt Felton, a junior from Latta, South Carolina. Twice Mr. Basketball in South Carolina and he set the state scoring record 2,992 career points. He was the National High School Player of the Year in 2002. Also led the state of South Carolina as a sophomore in high school in interceptions as a safety on the football team. Anything else you need, huh? He does it all for this team. Under six to go in the half. Iowa 
Staying close without Bruner and Hansen on the bench in foul trouble. They're starting front court. Felton will not let Horner get the ball. Aleska feels it. And the rebound by May with Thomas right on his back. Long pass. Oh, what a pass. Oh, gorgeous. Mostly Marvin. Marvin Williams tipped it off to McCants for the dunk and a foul against Iowa. The presence of mind to tip that and the elevation. Extraordinary. That's why you run the floor. You never know what's going to happen. Heads up play by McCants, but oh, mostly Marvin. 15 now for McCants. The foul was on Holuska, his second. Rashad McCants is having a point a minute game. I'm not sure there's been a player at Carolina in their illustrious history that has been as productive per minute scoring as has Rashad McCants. Well, you know what Dean Smith used to say about the only guy that could hold Jordan under 20 was Dean Smith. The lob and the miss by Thomas off the feed from Pierce. An eight point lead for North Carolina as we approach five minutes left in the first half. They consistently share the ball, Jay. That's one of the reasons. Santa Clara beat these guys. I have no idea. A lot of prayers. What a wake up call. Wow. North Carolina on the way out here to Maui lost to Santa Clara in Oakland, California, 77 66. They played without Raymond Felton, who was ineligible for that one game because he played in an unsanctioned summer league in North Carolina. His presence certainly makes a difference, but still, you would think North Carolina could handle a good Santa Clara team even without Felton. I think adversity sparks people. Beautiful catch and shoot opportunity, and go back to that touch pass. Unbelievable. I mean, can't down the floor early and prepared. And that is an unselfish play. Forty one twenty nine North Carolina with four fifty one to go in the first half McCants is 15 Marvin Williams with seven off the bench Melvin Scott with six on a pair of three pointers Aleska the only Hawkeye in double figures with 11 he's made a pair of three point field goals and Carolina's done it mostly with man to man they're looking to double but the game slipping away Steve Alford has put Bruner back in. And he travels the first time he touches the ball after the long rest with the two fouls. Nine turnovers for the Hawkeyes. Solid straight up man to man, Jake. Did a good job of staying big behind Bruner. Scott. Oh, They're having an easy time at the top of the zone. That shouldn't happen. What a clinic. Corner for three. Iowa really needed that one, and they got it from Jeff Horner. Third team all Big Ten last year. Wow. The Carolina's got 44 points over four minutes to go in the first half. And Extraordinary. So his ability to push the ball, this is too easy, Jay. Just drive the crack, pinch the two defenders, two play one, and Horner finally gets an open look. Well, they've averaged 90 points per game in their two wins here in Maui against BYU and Tennessee. 96 against the Cougars, 90, excuse me, 86, and then 94 against the Vols. And they're on a 100-point pace here this evening. Not an overstatement to say uh, they have looked very much like the number one ranked team in the country in the preseason as they were in a number of publications. Oh, no, come on, Bobby. Bruner just about moved. You know he's got the two fouls. Make it worthwhile. Oh. Now, this is not even in the nickel-dime category. 
This is the leftover change at Starbucks. Bruner. What do you think? I mean, the rule you're going to tell me, right? No. Hey, I would inclined to agree with you, but he has to be smarter than that when he knows he has two fouls already. That's right. From our angle here, it looked worse. Mm -hmm. The call was you're worse. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he should not get involved in that. He's got to be stationary. But an experienced guy like Bobby, usually Donato would let that one go. So no choice for Alford but to put Bruner back on the bench with three fouls. And the good news is he and Hanson will be resting in the second half, but they might not be within striking distance. Jackie Manuel with his first bucket, the senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Boy, did he pay attention to Roy. No more threes. Over 140 the first couple of years. Now just settling for medium game. Well, two years ago, Manuel shot 72 threes. Last year, that went down to 10 three-point attempts. Pierce with the three-pointer. Nine for Pierre. And they're back with an 11. We approach three minutes to go in the half. May gets it to roll around and in. Seven for Sean May. Well, that's coaching, though, that, that number. First two years, he was jacking them up. Ineffective. And an altering manual shot as well, trying to work on the mechanics of his shot. Fouls on Sean May, his second. And then the Hawkeyes will go to the free throw line after the media timeout. Exactly three minutes to go in the first half. Another impressive showing by the Heels. Looking for a big league gift for your future pro? The new ESPN Game Station by Fisher Price. It's six sports in one. Basketball, football, baseball, soccer, hockey, golf. With 21 electronic games. North Carolina by 13 as the sun is setting on this 21st annual EA Sports Maui Invitational. With the championship game coming up at the half, the UPS Halftime Report. Carl Ravage, Steve Lavin, and Rick Majerus. Highlights of the... Preseason NIT semifinals, and they'll debate the question who's better, North Carolina Tar Heels or their neighbors from Wake Forest? Well, it's going to be hard to tell this year because they only play once. One of the beautiful results of expansion. Mm. I would guess your expansion negative based on a couple of no. your comments. I mean, it, it, it's the way the world is. It was for football and money. I understand it. I don't have a problem with it, but it does take away one of the great, great aspects of the ACC. That's that everybody plays each other home and home. It's an even test. Maluska with 13 points, and they've needed his contribution with the foul difficulties for Eric Hansen and Greg Bruner. Seth Gorney has come into the game for Iowa now, a seven-foot freshman. Number 53. Manual, very tough shot, and there's Gorney blocking it. Doing his job in the middle, a little too deep. the first appearance in the Maui Invitational for Gordy. McCants, he knew that was off when charging after the rebound. I also knew it wasn't a good one. His first bad shot. Gordy played just three minutes in their opener against Western Illinois. And a whistle away from the ball as Horner lofted the shot. There's a foul on Iowa. I think it might be Gordy in the middle. Horner, it is. Horner finally gets that good look. He's been hampered as Gorney by a sprained ankle, one of the reasons why he hasn't seen much action. Very little, just three minutes all year. But forced into the fray here today with the difficulties with fouls of Bruner and Hansen. Two minutes to go in the half. We talked about the great starts for North Carolina in the first two games of this tournament. They've done it again here tonight. Nice. What a dive to the chin. Noel and Williams together. Street music. Noel the bucket. He turned down football scholarship offers to walk on to the basketball team in North Carolina. Jawad Williams the steal and the basket. They can score quickly. Put you in your misery. 52 in the first half. 
And this is the largest lead. Pierce. Oh, wow. Heck of a goal. Five on four here. Yeah, he's slow to get up and limping slightly. Emmanuel. They make you pay. They absolutely make you pay. Can't relax. You go to a highlight layup at one end, Jay. You can't even enjoy it against the heels. Pierce has to be thinking, what do I have to do? A highlight move, a little hesitation. What a fabulous move this is. And the finish. Use that rim, take on the defender, but you got to get up quickly. They're coming right back. Manuel finishes the three-point play. The foul on Gorney was a second. Pierce on the bench. Iowa's going to have a lot of work to do in the second half. Free ball. Out of bounds. The officials look at each other. It'll be Iowa ball with 26 to shoot. And Carolina's looking at 60 points in this first half. That's unbelievable. I mean, they got a chance on it. Who can match that? That's the difficulty. You've got to hold them down by taking better shots. Tough runner by Henderson in the miss. Melvin's got the rebound. Here's Quentin Thomas. Quentin Isaiah Thomas. He was named after the basketball star. Now the general manager of the New York Knicks. Marvin Williams. They all get on the scoreboard. Easy entry. Clever finish. 18, the advantage for North Carolina. Which apparently got a major wake-up call and then lost to Santa Clara. Perluska strong to the bucket, and he was fouled along the way. Emmanuel just couldn't get a turn, but the support was there. They just back up their guy. Williams took a shot there. Manuel's foul his second. That'll send Mike, or rather Adam Haleska to the line. Henderson lingering near the line, but it is Haleska who will shoot. A lot of guys nicked this half. Take a look at Melvin Scott over there. He is hurting on the free throw line. Lane, I should say. He might be coming out here. He will. So Rod Williams comes in. Scott looked a little wobbly as he went off. I think we could see a McCants three before this half is over. Uh, yeah, I think so. Six out of seven from the line for Haluska. He's been the star of the first half for Iowa with 14 points. And now North Carolina can take the last shot of the half. Jay Billis is on record predicting a three for a 20-point lead. Think something inside and then out. And you could also see a lob. And they go with a double screen and a slip. Jawad Williams, an air ball. Noel there to throw it in at the buzzer. 59 points in the first half for the University of North Carolina. They lead 59 to 40. Well, let's send you back to the studio now. Here's Carl. 120 linear miles of beautiful shoreline here in the island of Maui. The 12th and final game of the 21st EA Sports Maui Invitational. The championship on the line. And it's North Carolina with a 19 point lead. 58% shooting, not quite what they put up in the first half last night against Tennessee when they shot 65%, but they finished the half by making 11 of their last 14 shots, 78.5%. Well, this is how dominant North Carolina was. Iowa scored 40 points, 7 of 12 from 3, and they're down 19. And the Horner with 2 for 4, he's got to get more shots. And how about McCants line there? 5 of 8, unbelievable, 15 points. McCants managed to get all the way to the basket and scored with a left hand. He has 17. Make it 17. The guy's an absolute <laughs> joke. <laughs> what He's a an machine. absolute joke. Craig Bruner and Eric Hansen both open the second half for Iowa due to foul trouble. They played a combined 14 minutes out of a possible 40. And that is the first bucket for Bruner. How about Pierce? He's got 
Tucker one night and McCants the next. Not easy. We mentioned the end of the half for North Carolina. They hit 11 of 14 to finish the half. That wasn't as good as yesterday when they hit 14 of their last 17 shots of the first half. I don't know how he got by there without going out of bounds. What body control for Sean May with a little pin. Beautifully done. And he finished with the left hand, smiling afterwards. He's just toying with these guys. And he's guarding, too. Here, Pierce. Missed Haleska. Haleska thought Felton touched it, but he did not. Based on the judgment of the officials. Felton can guard his man, Jay, on the ball, without the basketball. We know he can run a team, but he has taken the gauntlet here. Kept Horner from touches. Felton guarded by Horner. McCants with Pierce on him. May Manuel, Jawad Williams, the fivesome. Here at the start of the second half for North Carolina. McCants a very tough fadeaway deflected by Eric Hansen. Out of bounds, last touch by Jawad Williams. Now he's trying to do a little bit too much, McCants. Roy Williams just looked at him and pointed to his temple, saying, Rashad, you got to think. Now he's really molding him into what he would like the ideal basketball player to be. Little shortcomings here and there, but a lot of coaches have been living it, right? Nice play. Brunner scored. He collided with May. A nice feed from Horner. And four points all here in the first two minutes of the second half for Greg Brunner. Now, May was right around or inside of that circle. That's an experimental rule. But if the offensive player hits the deck, doesn't it have to be a foul? Well, they're just not going to pay attention to what Hank told me. Yeah. I, I, I said to Hank, what if he misses it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I would think that if the guy hits the deck. Well, how about conversely? I go in for a layup, you get in under me, and you're outside it, there's no call. Hank being Hank Nichols, the supervisor of officials here. It's Eric Hansen with six points now. They're matching them bucket for bucket, but that's not going to be good enough for Iowa. Jawad Williams gets the bounce. Everything going right at the offensive end for North Carolina. Uh, nice job with the kickback. They're fill, they fill beautifully at the top of the key. Largest lead for the Tar Heels. Bruner did well to retain possession. He's a man possessed here in the first three minutes of the second half. Six points. May. Hacked by Hansen. And that's four. Get down the floor early. All the deep. Look at all the dark shirts inside. They just can't match up. I think they're exhausted. I think Iowa is absolutely exhausted. Look at them. They've all got their arms on their sides. They're all bent over at the waist, and they're all huffing and puffing. And these guys are not in bad shape. It is just that North Carolina has kept this relentless pressure on them on both ends of the floor. It's been a track meet. Well, partially, it's the quickness of Iowa's shot. I mean, you've got to gain control at some point. That's easy to say. They're relentless, and Steve knows this, and we're sitting here suggesting it. But they get into your head and speed you up. Somehow, you got to pull a plug. Few catches, few ball reversals. We know it. I was added this year to help their fitness and strength and conditioning. Yoga. They go as a group to a yoga class once a week. Craig Neal, the new assistant coach, said that's all the rage in the NBA. Greg Bruner, for one, said it's really helped me. I've used to have a bad back, but that's gone away with my improved flexibility because of yoga. I wonder if Noodles is the latest. Massage. That is one of the great blowbys, Jay. Raymond Felton and Horner quiets the rowdy Tar Heel partisans with a long three to get them back within 20. Blocked by Thomas. And then a bad pass by Horner, picked off by Felton. Scott. Missed a three. And a foul on the rebounding activity. Raymond Felton just pushes the ball up the court relentlessly, and everybody loves Raymond. Ooh. A little lingerie on the deck. Oh, my goodness. How about the strength after the push? Elevation. Run the team guard, assists. Just an outstanding performance. 
The nine points and nine assists last night against Tennessee. Manuel just committed his third foul for North Carolina. He's out. It's Felton Noel, Marvin Williams with Scott and May for the Tar Heels. Haluska. The tip wouldn't go for Mike Henderson. Noel the rebound. May, offensive foul. Pretty good job defensively. He did, Roy thought it was a flop, and I just think good position. It was great position, but both can be right. Good position and a flop. No, well, we've seen a lot of flops rewarded with the whistles in this tournament. There's your highlight of the night. Raymond Felton, the jam, and the Tar Heels continue to smile. Wow. Tomorrow, college basketball's feast week continues with a matchup of two of the top women's college basketball programs in the nation. Number one, Tennessee, and number four, Texas at 8 Eastern. Then at 10, the University of Utah men meet the 23rd ranked Washington Huskies in the great Alaska shootout. For more information and news, log on to ESPN.com. Well, it's early in the season. We're trying to size up who's a legitimate team, who might be a pretender, and North Carolina, where's the weakness? I, I don't see any. Maybe the coaches are tired. That's about <laughs> it. I mean, this is as deep as you get. And Marvin Williams is a guy we haven't mentioned much. The Noel, forget the mainstays, right, Jay? No, their talent is undeniable. Just a stunning performance in the first half. Like, it's hard to search your brain to find a better one over the last couple of years where somebody's gone out and scored 59 points in such an effortless fashion on a pretty darn good team in Iowa. And the hard. problem last year was the defense. They let the opponent score 75 a game. The field goal percentage was 44.4% for the opponents. Only Wake Forest was worse in that category in the ACC. May, too strong with a shot. Marvin Williams kept it alive for a moment, but now it's Henderson leading a three on three. Both Noel and Marvin Williams got a hand in. Felton behind the back. Oh, oh the dexterity. How about that? What a play! And he did it for good reason. It wasn't flash and dash. The defense dictated. He went behind his back to keep the ball away from the defender and then finishes with that injured left hand. So much for that. The heck of a tape job. Look at those eyes. Spectacular finish by a spectacular point guard in a spectacular team performance by the North Carolina Tar Heels. What an extraordinary play. He's had two. I don't think I've witnessed two as good by a point guard. The jam from the top in that particular play. Alaska made the first free throw. Raymond Felton was North Carolina's MVP as a freshman. You know, 203, first time a freshman was ever their team MVP. Last year was the preseason ACC Player of the Year. Wound up on the third team All Conference at the end of the season after he led the league in assists at seven a game. Jawad Williams, nice catch and score in traffic. Well, they just get down so fast, you can't get up on the passer or the recipient. You know, Sean, you were talking about giving up 75 points per game last year. You know, Carolina may give up 85 in tonight's game, but they're going to score 120. They well, at the it. pace they play, That's exactly they right. score so often, they give the other team more chances to score. They drag the right. ball's they, back quickly in their hands. There are they, more possessions. That's exactly right. They drag you along. It's incredible. So it, the point is, you can allow your opponent to score more points this season because there are more possessions, but you're still playing pretty darn good defense. And boy, is this fun to watch. Now, I don't think that's a kick. He threw it in his leg. But they receive, they get the ball by full time clock. Felton's going to come out. I feel like applauding. Go I, ahead. I know it's not permissible. Oh. I'm right with you. I mean, th this has been a stunning performance. Well, when we see the plays of the night on Sports Center, he'll have two of the top ten. Maybe the top two. Hard to believe that two. could have been surpassed. And and the Williams touch pass to McCants will be in the top ten. You guys should produce. Oh, you do a good enough job of that for all three of us. <laughs> Jawad Williams the miss and Pierre Pierce the rebound, his fourth. 
Good news for Iowa tonight, at least. It doesn't look like the ankle injury to Pierce is serious at all. And Thomas just back into the defender, Jawad Williams, and committed his third foul. That's one of those where are you go, and he'll learn. Trying to do it all. And Steve knows right now he's in a, a buzzsaw. This is as good a performance I've seen. Steve celebrated his 40th birthday here yesterday. And his team, regardless of the outcome tonight, is off to a good start. If you had told him he'd come out here and beat Louisville in Texas, make it to the championship game, I think he'd be happy with that. And obviously, you want to win the championship game, too. But against these three teams to go two and one, if it finishes this way, and it's likely to, he has to be satisfied. Absolutely. I think he's got something to work with also. Nice denial here by Bruner. Thompson up big on the passer. Eighth North Carolina turnover. Pierce from very deep, little short. Quentin Thomas elevating. He's a freshman from Oakland, California. He had his high school jersey at Oakland Tech. Retired at halftime of their game in Oakland against Santa Clara. The dunk by Jawad Williams. The only question now seems to be how far over 100 is North Carolina going to go tonight? Not only do they score, they score quickly. Quickly and unselfishly. And of course, selfishness was an issue from time to time last year. Carl Reed, the freshman, fouled in his drive. He'll go to the line. And I just saw the fist up. One of Dean Smith's originals. Fist up, get me out. Jawad Williams, a little bit fatigued. And Rashad McCants whistled for his third foul. Marvin Williams getting ready to come in. And Holuska will return. Now, Carlton Reed's a good looking prospect. Really good defender. Mr. Basketball last year in Iowa at Waterloo East. His team played in the state championship game in Iowa three years in a row. He won the state title at Waterloo East as a junior. Joe Montana, among the many celebrities we have seen here this tournament. Ben Crenshaw, Danny Ainge, Ernie Grunfeld, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, Magic Johnson, David Robinson. Just a few of those who were in the house. A lot of the top personnel people in the NBA, general managers and scouts. Horner for three. And that has not occurred often enough for that club. He has just been guarded beautifully. Well, Joe Montana was a pretty good high school basketball player. Got some scholarship offers out of the state of Pennsylvania. Not sure he'd want to go up and down with these guys, though. You think Felton's a better passer? <laughs> On a basketball court, he is. I'm not sure Joe could elevate and dunk like Felton did. Or go behind the back. Williams working on Thompson, freshman on freshman. May whistle and a foul in North Carolina. Well, the scatter report on the bad wrist. We thought it was the funny bone. I think it may have been. Or they were tickling ours. He has just done anything he has wanted. This is just amazing. The hops, serious hops, the blow by. And how about this? Kuz in his heyday. I don't think he could have done it. The switch to the left hand, tape and all. A little kiss. Look how far out they've got to go just to make a catch. The no drop off in the intensity of the Carolina defense with this big lead. Carlton Reed, a three ball. He has four points. That's his highest point total in the Maui Invitational at two yesterday against Texas. Nothing uncontested either. And Manuel pushed by Reed. First foul on Carlton. And a timeout. 16 point lead for North Carolina in the championship game. Back on the island of Maui, the second largest of the Hawaiian Islands, 729 square miles, 48 miles long. It does not get any more beautiful. Tomorrow, Thanksgiving, be sure to tune in for exciting college football action at 8 Eastern on ESPN. 21st ranked West Virginia takes on their arch rival from just up the road in Pittsburgh, the Panthers on college football primetime. Presented by Cooper Tires. For more information and news, log on to ESPN.com. That is a fierce rivalry. 
You have a few more football games left, right? A couple bowl, bowl games. games coming up. Looking forward to the bowl season for ESPN and ESPN2. So we get a respite from you, Jay and I. I know you'll miss me terribly. I will. I will. Felton will stop and go, shut off by Bruner. Felton, Manuel, Marvin Williams, Jawad Williams, and Rashad McCants. Felton. Rebound, Bruner running the floor. Holuska, that's the first rebound of the night for Bruner. And a foul on Jawad Williams. Good reaction defensively, though. Don't give up anything easy. Foul line jumper with the point guard. Occasionally, people don't balance the fall properly. And the that quick run out, that's a little bit too easy for North Carolina. I mean, if Haleska can drop these two free throws, we're looking at a 14-point game. That's still a pretty big margin, but there's 11-22 left. And with the three-point line, the way that Haleska, Horner, and Pierce can hit threes. It depends on the intensity. I don't think we'll see any back off of Carolina, but this is a, one of those early big stops. 18 points for Holuska, the breakout game for him. 10 of 11 from the line. McCants, another deep three. And a set play. They ran baseline bumps, and Pierce followed. The wrong guy left McCants open. 20 points for Rashad. He's had 20-plus in three of the first four games of the season now for North Carolina. Look where you're playing hide-and-seek. 27 feet away. Bruner turns to work on Marvin Williams. Nicely done. Well, you saw Steve Alford clapping for his team going into the last timeout. They are trying to chip away at this, despite a brilliant performance offensively by North Carolina. Showing a lot of heart, too. Jawad Williams rattles out to Jeff Pointer, who committed to Iowa as a ninth grader. Carl Marie and the rebound down to Marvin Williams. Nearly midway through the second half. <laughs> McCants, he certainly can make it from there, but decided not to jack it with Reed running out on him. Jawad Williams, a chance for three. He was bumped by Alex Thompson. Now that's great patience by McCants, Sean. You mentioned the ability to shoot it deep. Good possession. Got others involved? Defense lacking here, Jay. A little bit, but a little fatigue. You mentioned earlier, I think the big guys not enjoying chasing the white shirts. But a solid drive by Jawad Williams, who has really improved his game, playing very mature. Jawad missed the free throw. Out of bounds to Iowa. While we have a moment, we want to congratulate our good friend Wayne Duke. Middle of your screen there. Sitting alongside Dave Gabbett. He is the tournament chairman emeritus. Thank you, Bill. Nice they had a duck out of the way. He's being inducted into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Felt in a dunk. Of course, for many years, Wayne was the commissioner of the Big Ten. We also want to wish his wife, Martha, a happy 75th birthday today. They've been married 54 years. Bruner a miss. He's made our job so easy over here. Nice run by May. Oh, my goodness. How about his ability to stay between floors, linger, take the hit by Thompson, and finish it? But it, isn't it beautiful to watch a big guy run the floor like that? Watch him run. And Iowa just cannot keep up. And the bump, yet the finish, and nobody was more excited than was Raymond Felton to see his big teammate run the floor. And, Jay, how many options did he have, Felton? Three. I mean, three to one underneath. 12 points. They have 87 points with nine and a half minutes to go. They're on a 10-0 run. Strong inside, Doug Thomas, the junior in his first year at Iowa, junior college transfer from Southeastern Iowa Community College where he played on back-to-back -back national championship teams. The high school spent a year in North Carolina at Christian Faith Center Academy. Felton. 
Felton's been tremendous. There'll be a lot of point guards around America trying to sprain their wrists in the next few days. <laughs> that's the way you play when you have one. Uh, he is, he has really been a great leader today. And this has to be such a welcome sight, fellas, for North Carolina fans. You know, so much turmoil in that program, uncharacteristically so, the last few years, and signs of the good old days. Yeah, yeah, the first year of a job, Jay, is the hardest job. I mean, no matter, even at that level. And I think it takes a while to sort things out. And I think that loss, as devastating as it might have been for Tar Heel fans, has put them in the right order. Well, they seem to have sorted it out. And holy cow, what, what a tremendous performance by this North Carolina basketball team. On every level. You can't find a weakness right now. No. I mean, they have five terrific starters. Rebounders, shooters, role players, defenders. Manuel was the defensive player of the year. They're on the defensive team in the ACC last year and is their best defender. And they have four subs that have played a lot. And West Miller, a heck of a guard, would be the fifth sub. I mean, that is a terrific bench. And you have to think Marvin Williams and Quentin Thomas are going to get better as the year goes along. They've got big guys that can play minutes. Byron Sanders. They can bring in Rayshon Terry if they need to. Melvin Scott, I think, I think, has played really good basketball in this entire tournament. Defensively, he's been solid, knocking down shots. Hit some big threes in the first half. He has two fouls now. Marvin Williams goes to the bench. Now, you mentioned Terry and Sanders. That brings them to 12. That's a very impressive array of talent. That's enough. Yeah, I think we can get by. And Terry and Sanders are not going to play big minutes, no. don't get me wrong. We still haven't even mentioned David Noel, who has come in and been solid in this ball game. I mean, this, this is a good team that has depth. And the way they play, they're going to play a lot of players, and they are going to wear you down. You can see Iowa has been worn down a little bit. Mm -hmm. 19 wins last year, first time since Roy Williams' first year at Kansas. First of his 15 that he failed to win 20, but they had nine games that were hanging the balance in the last 90 seconds that went the loss column last year. It easily could have been a much different season in terms of the record. Still finished at 19 and 11. Well, that connection, you know, that chemistry lacking enough to push it on situation. I think they can keep moving back this experimental line. I mean, we have seen guys throughout this tournament making three-pointers from way beyond even the deeper experimental line they've been using here. That's 15 points now for Jeff Horner. We talk about turmoil at the North Carolina program the last few years. There's been some in Iowa as well, academic problems, player defections. Horner had to listen to rumors that he was transferring all summer. He said, I never even thought about it, but that was a rumor that spread around Iowa. So this could be a great year for Iowa, I think. And this, this is a great learning. You mentioned the two wins. Would you be satisfied? They could find a lot of things wrong, Steve and his staff, in this game, but a lot to look forward to the future to. The pants explosive to the bucket, but missed a short shot, and then Pierce ripped the rebound away from him. Four on two, and the dunk. Thomas from Pierce. He is amazing. Athletic, the running ability. And a deserving send it in. High low, beautiful. Sean May. They have 95 points with seven minutes to go. You can't shake hands on a great play with your buddy. They're going to score while you're slapping five. It's unbelievable. And McCants can score in so many different ways. And he opens up things for his teammates. Quick run out. Look at this pass. Pretty. The yeah, Iowa's exhausted. Yeah. They are absolutely exhausted. This has been a track meet for them, and they cannot keep up. It's starting to look like your pickup game at lunchtime now, where guys just can't run back because they're too tired. If you're wondering about the record for points in a game here in the Maui Invitational, forget about it, because Loyola Marymount, back in the heyday, <laughs> played here. Paul Weston. They scored 162 points on Chaminade. In 1990, we talk about records in sports that'll never be broken. That's, I think that one is that's safe. That's right, Joe D's up 56. Unless you had about eight overtimes out here. Bruner fouled by Jawad Williams, his second. 97-75, North Carolina impressive, always impressive. Carl Ravitch. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors Bureau, Zales, the Diamond Store, and Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? This is not a distraught Iowa fan. This gentleman does this every night at one of the local hotels here in West Maui in the Kanapali area. More than 60 hotels on Maui, more than 10,000 hotel rooms. Have you joined him in that venture? Uh, jumping off that little rock, no. You may be pushed. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly if one of you two happens to be in the vicinity. Here's Bruner at the line, looking for his ninth point. And he'll shoot another. There is a certain toughness about this guy. Greg got in foul trouble early. Never really immersed himself in the game till beginning of the second half. Well, they're likely looking at a loss tonight, but you'd have to like their chance of improving on the 16 and 13 record of a year ago, three years in a row in the NIT. You'd have to say they stand a good chance of being in the NCAA again this year. Iron Sanders just into the game. Number 41 for North Carolina had his shot rejected. Henderson with Reed. Pointer, Hanson and Bruner for the Hawkeyes. They finished fourth in the Big Ten at nine and seven last year, but did not make the NCAA tournament. The dunk by Hanson. Nice penetration by Bruner. And once again, Felton will not give Horner an opportunity to touch it. A nice job by Sanders inside to try to get position seal off. A three-point field goal from 100 points with more than five minutes to go. McCants leading North Carolina with 22. Jawad Williams, 18. Sean May, 14. Raymond Felton now with 13. Stroke, huh? Well, if he hits that shot consistently, forget it. I mean, Iowa's been going underneath ball screens, and they won't be able to do that if he can consistently knock that down. He does not want Horner to get a look. He just love that attitude. Corner at 27 yesterday against Texas, including six three-pointers. His career high. He made three key free throws down the stretch. 12 now for Bruner. Carolina hit the 100 mark with more than five minutes to go. Marvin Williams a miss. Byron Sanders, the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi, with the rebound. They try to get him on the score sheet. But Bruner shut him off and Reed knocked the pass out of bounds. Jawad Williams back in. Quentin Thomas comes back in with Sean May. North Carolina in the game is 10 of 17 from three point range. Sports Center comes your way next. Manual. Good opportunity for Thomas to run the show, get some people involved, and learn. He's a nice player, good yeah, ball he handler, has the potential to be a good defender, long arm, just learning his way. Thrown into the fire to start against Santa Clara in the absence of Felton. Henderson stepped into a three. Mike's a sophomore from Waterloo, Iowa. His brother Courtney played at Southern University in Louisiana. May rejected at the rack by Henderson and Hansen. Henderson travel. Got a pass and Horner a little frustrated. 19 turnovers for Iowa. North Carolina on the way to the championship of the EA Sports Maui Invitational. North Carolina leads Iowa by 16 with just more than three and a half minutes to go. Then we're off to Sports Center with Stuart Scott and Scott Van Pelt. They'll have the details on a 40 plus point night for LeBron James. An apology from Ron Artest. The Cowboys have a new quarterback. Hmm. Probably Drew Henson. For more information and news, log on to ESPN.com. Well, North Carolina has 100 points, and Iowa has blocked 12 shots tonight. Hanson has five of them. That's one shy of the team block shot record. In a single game, Maryland blocked 13 against Dayton in 2000. Just absolutely relentless on both ends of the floor. One end complements the other. 
I'm sure Iowa's never blocked double digit shots in a game and lost. And given up 100. I would think. And Hansen gets one here. That could be it. Yep. He's trying to front and do a good job on Sean May. Takes a lot of quarters to get around that body. Five block shots for Hansen. And one of the questions starting the season was how good would he be? Because he was a bench player last year, averaged just two points per game in 11 and a half minutes. So they need a big step up into a much more prominent role. And he's demonstrated here against outstanding competition, he's more than capable. Now he has taken a major step forward this season. There's some pieces here. Now this, this is a good team. Steve should feel good going home. Hung in here, competed, had that little chance. Look, they got the 14. Remember we were saying? Haleska on the free throw line. All of a sudden, some life in Carolina. Met it. Well, McCants came down and banged down a three right mm -hmm. after Haleska made his free throw. So much for the, uh, <laughs> the run. Iowa hopes of a comeback. They've announced the all-tournament team. Pointer for three. He's on it, along with Rashad McCants and Raymond Felton, Brad Buckman of Texas, and Taekwon Dean of Louisville. And Raymond Felton has been named the most valuable player of this 2004 EA Sports Maui Invitational, Join, joining Joseph Forte as Tar Heels, who have won that honor. Forte won it in 99 when the Tar Heels won their other Maui Invitational. Hard to argue been, with it. Could have been either guy, really, right? McCants or Felton. Could have been a co-MVP. But I'll make the argument for Felton. He, he, he pressured the ball. He ran the team. He was indispensable. But I'll tell you what, McCants was by far the most impressive. Mm -hmm. Now, are we projecting this contest too early? ESPN, we're reviewing exit polling. It is just a 15-point game of three minutes to go. How many electoral votes in Hawaii? Four. Very good. You know the population of Maui? 118,000. I'd like to make it 118,001. <laughs> How about three? If, no, that one. One were added, <laughs> if that one were added, the one you're thinking of, there'd be a mass exodus of the other 118,000, wouldn't there? I don't think Bill would drive that many people <laughs> off the island. <laughs> Under three minutes to go now. Still unselfish. I mean, that's the trademark. Get a touch, reverse the ball, trade sides. Geez, they've only scored two points here in the last two and a half minutes. What's wrong with this offense? <laughs> Manual the miss. Bruner tipped it away to Horner. Manual intercepted the pass. Up, up. Give it to Noel. Great recovery by Manuel. We talk about his work habits. It's just tremendous effort to cover. Eight points for Noel. He's fully healthy this year after a thumb injury really hampered him all of last season. So he should be another reason why Carolina will be improved. Traveling the call. Well, we look forward to next year, as terrific as this field was. How about that loaded field? Arizona, Arkansas, Chaminade, Connecticut, Gonzaga, Kansas, Maryland, and Michigan State. And it's pretty solid in 2006 as well. And that group next year, that might be the best field they've ever had here. I think it is. They feel it is. That group next year has won six national championships since 1988. The EA Sports Maui Invitational MVP goes out. And Bruner departs for Iowa. Heck of a player. He sure he is. is. Never got a chance early. Saddled with foul problems. 13 points tonight and nine assists for Felton, by the way, his second straight nine assist game. There'll be a lot of good nights for Bruner. Bobby, Bobby. 
Go ahead and finish the sentence, Bill. No. Bobby, I have a flight. <laughs> but the, no, 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 no. I'm in no hurry. Just the nickel dimers. That's five fouls on Thomas. He leaves with eight points for Iowa and five rebounds. Yeah, we have talked an awful lot about North Carolina tonight, and rightfully so. They have been absolutely magnificent, but you certainly don't want to overlook the job that Steve Alford's done with this team. I was really impressed with the way he ran practice, the way he's bringing this team along. You know, there's a shape and a form to this team. They understand their roles. Some young people are going to get better by the end of the year. And they're going to be even better next year. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be back. They're going to have a good recruiting class coming in. This Iowa program on solid ground. And a great building, too. I mean, that's a terrific home court. They get it going. Well, their attendance has dwindled in recent years, but with this team, I have a feeling we'll come back up. You know, one team that I think people may be sleeping on a little bit in the Big Ten is Michigan State. I mean, Michigan State is a contender this year, not just in that league, nationally. I just love their experience, too. With Davis coming back, there's Anderson. Alan Anderson, Torbert. Maurice Sager, Kelvin yep. Torbert. And, and Neitzel, Neitzel, Neitzel. Neitzel. Very talented. Drew Neitzel. Good size guard. Shannon Brown. I mean, that's a really, really powerful basketball team. I think it's going to make a lot of noise nationally. Is this the blue team? Roy Williams is uh, totally empty to bench now. Charlie Everett, C.J. Hooker, Damian Grant, Rayshon Terry, Wes Miller, the fivesome on the floor for North Carolina. McCants leaves with 22 points on 8 out of 14 from the floor. Look at them get out and guard. It's good the way these nice guys see. are. And also Iowa running their stuff. Nothing silly or selfish. And Steve Alford has emptied his bench as well. This is Jack Brownlee, the only senior on the team, and he's a walk-on. Number 13 is Justin Wick, also a walk-on. J.R. Angle, the freshman, is in. Number four, Seth Gorney back in the game as well with Alex Thompson. And with a shot clock running out, Brownlee... He was a walk-on, put on scholarship for this his last season. Missed the shot. Under a minute to go. Charlie Everett stripped on the way up. And a foul. And takedown. Busy schedule upcoming for North Carolina. They're going to leave here tomorrow night, return to Chapel Hill. They'll get in Friday night about 6 o'clock, go right to practice because they have a game Sunday with Southern California. And then two days later, they're at Indiana in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. This is an ACC Big Ten matchup tonight. Iowa will not be participating in the ACC Big Ten Challenge this year. Uh, Roy really got them ready to, I mean, just bouncing back attitude. Performance and still coaching. Well, he worked under the best alongside a great one, Dean and Bill Guthridge. Justin Wick, a walk on junior from North Liberty, Iowa, played at Kirkwood Community College with the free throws. Three second call of the day. Ten turnovers for North Carolina now. Brownlee says, I'm going to get my chance. I'm going to maximize it. Gorney, the offensive rebound. Under a half minute to go. J.R. Angle couldn't control the tough pass. C.J. Hooker hustled after it, but couldn't save it. And Roy Williams cracking a smile, and there's a lot to smile about in this game. But a lot of nail biting over on ESPN2, Michigan and Arizona in the NIT in overtime. J.R. Angle, the freshman from Franklin, Indiana. Averaged 17 points last year in high school at Indian Creek, where his dad, Larry, was the coach. He was fourth in the state of Indiana last year in scoring. Everett the miss, Rayshon Terry the rebound, and that's it. North Carolina has won the 21st annual EA Sports Maui Invitational. Final score, 106 to 92. Sports Center comes your way now for Bill Raffi and Jay Billis. Sean McDonough saying so long for Maui. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Carolina.
China, the champion, and they win in stylish fashion. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.